Well, everyone, it's time for my yearly reminder of you to pretty much be careful with your iPhone and pretty much any time you have the chance to avoid doing these two things. A lot of people are picking up the brand new iPhones, the 14s or 14 Pros, and I would hate for you to be in a situation where you are breaking your device or you're breaking your device. And the very first thing in this whole entire scope of this specific you know, conversation is installing a beta. Installing a beta on your phone, in my opinion, whether it's the next full OS version like iOS 17 beta when that drops in June, or even if it's like 16.2, that beta that just dropped as well, there is practically no reason for you to ever install a beta on your personal phone. Whether it's, you know, the next major version that has tons of cool features, even if it brings some crazy stuff, it is not worth installing on your phone because it is a bug. It is just a not a stable version of software. Now, what does that mean? Well, lately, a lot of versions haven't really been that stable but the beta side is even less stable than the official version. There's more testing and there's, you know, more people that are going to be using the official version. So Apple has to go through and has to make sure it's, you know, pretty much a more stable version that's not breaking everyone's phone. On the beta side, it is just them testing a bunch of things and fixing a bunch of things. So yeah, you're getting a bunch of cool features, but you're also, you know, getting through with the potential of possibly having a, you know, messed up phone in some form or fashion. So that can be an issue. So because of that, it might might make more sense for you to just hold off on, you know, installing a beta, even if you have the latest iPhone 14 Pro, and then pretty much installing the official version when it officially comes out. So that is pretty much the main thing. I've seen way more people installing betas recently. I install betas as well, but not on my personal phone. I've never installed a beta on my, I don't install betas on my personal phone at all anymore. I used to, I learned the lesson the hard way, and I would not recommend doing it at all. Now, another big thing is actually with wireless charging. Now, I talk about this every year, but I have to keep reminding people, whenever you wirelessly charge your phone, you, in my opinion, increase the potential of pretty much degrading your phone's battery health way faster than normal. So what does this mean? Well, essentially, when you charge your phone, at least from how I found it, the first time I ever charged my phone wirelessly was like many, many years ago. It was a Nexus 4 and I wirelessly charged it and I picked it up and, you know, after the day and I was like, oh my God, my phone is so hot. And since then, I pretty much never wirelessly charged my phone until I got the 12 Pro. And with the iPhone 12 Pro, we got the MagSafe charger and everything, which was cool. But guess what? That wireless charger ended up pretty much, you know, reducing my battery health on my iPhone a massive, a massive amount. So then guess what? I stopped using wireless charger. My battery health didn't really go down too much after. And then my iPhone 13 Pro, I didn't wireless charge it at all. And it's been a tremendous experience. I've been having a great time with it. And my battery health is still at 100%. So what I would recommend doing on your 14 Pros or any iPhone for that matter, just try not to wireless charge that device. You're probably going to be in a way better situation and probably have a longer lasting phone if you just charge it normally and pretty much go on from there. So that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.